Good afternoon. I'm Kevin Brennan with the Notre Dame Alumni Association. Thanks for joining us once again for another edition of On Point at Notre Dame, the online learning series that allows you to learn more about uh, issues facing the university and interact directly with top university officials. Last week, a new group of first-year students moved into their dorms all across campus and began their journeys here at Notre Dame. Here with us today to discuss the talented class of 2018 and answer your questions about the admissions process at Notre Dame is Don Bishop, the Associate Vice President for Undergraduate Enrollment at the University. Don has more than 30 years of experience in, in admissions. His career started at Notre Dame in 1977 and he remained with the admissions office here until 1985. Over the next 25 years, he held senior level enrollment positions at a number of uh, universities across the country, including Ohio Wesleyan, the Cornell University School of Hotel Administration, Creighton University, and Embry-Brittle Aeronautical University. Don returned to Notre Dame in 2010 to oversee the enrollment division, and under his leadership, Notre Dame has continued to attract and admit students of the highest caliber from all across the country and indeed from nations across the world. Don is a member of the class of 1977, and he also holds a master's degree in economics from Notre Dame. Don Bishop, thanks so much for being here. Thank you very much. For uh, those of you uh, watching live, uh, just want to explain if this is your first time how this is going to work. Don is going to walk us through a presentation uh, on the class of 2018 and the admissions process here at Notre Dame. And afterwards, he'll be taking your questions. To submit a question, you can do so using the Q&A panel on the bottom right hand part of your screen. And you can do so throughout today's event. And we'll try to get to as many of your questions as we can within uh, the hour that we have here today. So with that, uh, Don, I'll hand it over to you. Great. Well, thank you. And it's a pleasure to be talking to you today. Uh, what I'm going to try to do in about a 20 minute to half hour presentation, leaving plenty of time for us to get into questions and answers, I'd like to talk about how we select the class first. I'm then going to show you the profile of the class that we selected and, and who selected us. Talking about some of the dynamics about not only how we select students, but how we think they do select us as well. I oversee financial aid as well as admissions, so I'll cover both those areas. And then um, I'll also comment on how we're presenting the university to the public so that you can see how we are trying to communicate and get the right students to uh, be attracted to Notre Dame and, and get them here. Any question afterwards that you have about admissions, anything about uh, financial aid, uh, I hope that I'll be able to cover it. If for some reason we can't, we'll make sure that we get back to you. So we'll note your question and, and email you if I'm not able to give you a specific answer. Uh, so with that, uh, I'd like to start with telling you a little bit about how we admit a freshman class at Notre Dame. Just stop moving. Right One moment. Can you say brief? Can you just move it? Yeah. Oh, okay. There we go. So. Um, First thing that I think is important is that we do use a holistic process. Uh, we're not just counting the numbers. Uh, we are looking for students who both have the intellectual drive as well as they have the personal attributes, which at Notre Dame, given our goal of being a tactful force for good in the world, includes looking at their, their sense of service to others, their energy level activity. I'll go through a little bit more detail in, in a few minutes on those other attributes. Uh, we are looking for students that embrace challenge. We want to be hardworking, caring, from all backgrounds and regions of the world coming together to, to form their purpose and talents at Notre Dame. One of the things I like to say is we need to prepare our students for leadership in the world. And if they all come from the same place, they're not going to go very far when they leave Notre Dame uh, without that awareness of the variety of cultures that out, are out there, the type of thinking. So we've gotten more assertive over the last 20 years, 30 years, on going national. Well, not so much nationally. We've always been national, but, but globally. So if we can move it. There we go. It's working. Now, when we go to read the file, 
files and every application is read. We get just under 18,000 applications. The first thing the committee uh, has been trained to do and, and takes very seriously is reading the high school transcript. So we first look at what courses did the student take? What courses were available for them to take? So did they challenge themselves with essentially the most demanding curriculum that was available at that high school. Each high school is different. Some have AP programs, some have IB, others don't. You're not penalized if your school doesn't have those programs. The main question is, did you do everything you could in the environment that you were in to take the best education? And then what were the results of those efforts? Did you do well? We also look at the four-year span. So a student who starts as a freshman and has some adjustments, some growing up to do, but by sophomore year really kicks it in, does very well the last three years, but those GPAs and grades from the first year may pull down their average, we, we will excuse that and really look at the most current work, meaning really junior and senior year primarily with some regard to the sophomore year. Uh, to be candid, Many of our applicants have almost flawless transcripts now all the way through high school. Uh, there is a lot of grade inflation in America. When I came to Notre Dame, uh, there was a national survey that is still done of American freshmen going to college. 15% of the high school classes in the 70s and 80s identified when they went to college that their high school average was an A plus, A or A minus, 15%. That percentage is now 54%. There is a lot more grade inflation, so just looking at grades is not sufficient to pick a class. We have to know how one school uses their grading system versus another, and that's why we have regional admission officers that focus and become experts on their high schools in their region. They also often travel to these high schools to talk with the schools themselves and administrators so that we have a form of, of a communication and relationship with the school that we can call them and talk to them if we have questions. So it's, it's the quality of the coursework that you do, the quality of the work that you do, and in addition, uh, the competition at the high school. So if you go to a high school where the top 10% tend to track nationally uh, as having talent levels in the top 1%, then it would be unfair to use a class rank at that school the same as another school that doesn't have that density of talent. So we also look at the density of talent at the top and we evaluate the schools in that context. So when an applicant's transcript is read, all of those factors are considered when we make our final judgment on how well did they do in school. In addition to their class performance, the national testing, uh, I think all of you are very aware of the SAT and the ACT. We use your highest score. So if you take the SATs twice, and we take your highest critical reading, your highest math, we also note the writing score. Uh, but when you use the 1600 scale for critical reading and math, uh, let's say your score was 700 verbal, 700 math the first time. The second time it was 650 verbal, but 750 math. We will take the 700 verbal from the first test, add it to the 750 math from the second, and now your SAT cumulative for your critical reading in math is 1450. If you take the ACT, we take your highest composite score from any single test that you take. Many students now are taking both the SAT and the ACT because they're not sure which one they will do their best work on. Um, quite frankly, I. I think that many students should uh, think about taking both tests twice so that they have four exams and we will take the highest SAT or the highest ACT. So let's say you've taken uh, those two SATs that I described, but then your student takes the ACT and they score a 31 the first time, but they score a 34 the second time in the composite. The 34 is equivalent to 1510 on the SAT. So we'd actually store the 34 and keep that as your single national test result and ignore all the other scores. 
Uh, if you are interested in knowing what the conversion table is for the SAT and ACT, just Google SAT, ACT conversion rates and you'll see that there is a nationally published grid scale that converts the ACT to SAT or the SAT to ACT. And all the schools use the same grid. This was done in joint research by SAT and ACT in a concordance research project. So uh, that will at least give you an idea of which score was, was higher if you take both. Um, you don't want to go crazy on test taking. Test taking is not as important as class performance. You do want to do your best on them. You want to practice. I, I think a good level of practice is helpful to do. But in the end, we are going to be more interested in your class performance over four years as your primary evaluation on academic uh, potential. But the SATs are very helpful to us, or the ACTs, in showing us how you acquire knowledge, re retain it, and use it. And it is still very important. Uh, we did have a student take the SATs 10 times one time. Uh, that's way too much. Uh, I think two times each on uh, the exams, or if you want to just take one or the other, take it two times. If you were ill and you want to take it a third time, I think that's OK. Um, generally, you want to ask yourself, what have I done between now and the last test that my, my score will be higher? And if you think that you can elevate it, uh, you're more than welcome to, to do that. Uh, you also want to be mindful of deadlines so that will we have the test score by the time we are reading your application. So it's important to get those done in the fall or the very, very early winter of your senior year if you've applied regular action. Um, school recommendations are important. And I think that one of the things that uh, you want to make sure that uh, you do with the school recommendations is that teachers who know you both as a student and as a citizen and comment on both are the most helpful to us. The teacher recommendations are carefully read and we also get oftentimes from a counselor. So we often see two or three recommendations from the high school and those are helpful. Uh, if you have special talents, special organizations that you work for outside of school, also feel free to seek those recommendations out. Uh, the record number of recommendations is 87. That student did not get in. Um, you know, the, the old saying in admissions is the thicker the file, the thicker the student. It's not who you know, it's who you are. Do not feel pressured to get Notre Dame alumni, uh, important people in your city, state or, or country, uh, to write letters for you. That's not how admissions works. We're interested in people who really know you well, who interact with you on a daily basis and can comment on you. Now, if you happen to have somebody who knows Notre Dame extremely well, who knows you extremely well, and you want to add one additional recommendation, that is perfectly fine and we appreciate hearing from our alumni, but only in the context that they need to know you very well. Um, you don't need a recommendation from uh, an important person to gain admission or name. It's more important that we get to know you through these recommendations. I also wanted to note that uh, a very powerful part of the application that you have full control over is what you write. So your written statements, your, your essay and your short question answers, we look at your depth of thought, we're looking at your vocabulary and your sophistication of writing, so your communication skills. And equally important, we're trying, just trying to get a sense for you. With 18,000 applications, it is not realistic to do interviews for all applicants. So your essay and your written statements is your ability to convey in a personal way what you want us to know about you. My advice is always talk about what, not just your accomplishments, but what motivated you. So when you talk about being uh, accomplished in something that you thought was an important achievement that you want us to know, that's great. Briefly describe the achievement, but spend a lot more time telling us about your motivation. Why did you do it? What did you learn from it? 
how has it changed you? And how might that experience parlay into a more meaningful experience at Notre Dame? So tie that statement together with the motivation of why you did it, what you learned, and what you're going to do next because of that experience. If you do that for all your applications, not just Notre Dame, I think you'll improve your uh, presentation of yourself. Uh, accomplishment is less important than motivation in a lot of areas uh, when we read the, the essays. So we're trying to get to know you. Uh, activities are the other main area of consideration. I'm often asked, well, is, are there certain activities that are liked more than others? No. Uh, we like all activities. We're looking for energy level, involvement with others, a sense of service, also a, a sense of commitment. You're just are you willing to commit to something and see it through? Uh, if you've developed any unique perspectives through some of these activities, make sure you convey those in your written statements. Uh, it, activities in addition to the words that you write in your essays, you know, the words and the actions come together and form a mental picture that we have of you above and beyond your academics. Uh, if you are deep into two things, so you don't have 10 activities, but you have two that you're really deep into, that's every bit as good as being involved in a, a larger number. So it's not the number of activities, it's the depth and the commitment of your activities that's more important to us. And if you honestly have a special passion, you're, you, you love music, you formed a rock band, you've done a lot with that rock band, that's great. Let's say that you've had to work part-time 20, 30 hours a week. Tremendous commitment to that. Talk about that. Uh, that's an activity. What we're interested in is what are you learning from doing the things that you're doing? Are you taking your activities and thinking through them? I have a son who's a comedian in Hollywood, and one of my favorite lines of his is, uh, having fun is not my idea of fun. When you think about that, think about what you think is fun. How do you vary from your classmates? What do you think is fun that they don't think is fun? But it is fun for you. And describe to us why that's true. Why is that fun? for you. Um, show us the passion that you have, the energy level. Colleges really view 18-year-olds as people who haven't really figured it all out yet. We're here to help you think through things better and to see all your options. But that core sense of energy and commitment to doing your best, uh, we, we think we can tell when we're reading files uh, as best as possible we try to tell whether you, you have that spark or not. So we're looking for it. So share us how, what has sparked you in your life. And the more you enjoy talking about something, I think the better you'll be at describing it successfully. Um, we do look at special attributes and special talents. So if you are a great musician, feel free to go online and produce a, a piece that you post online with our admission office so that our music department can look at it. If you're an artist and you have an art portfolio that you want to post online, if you are a great debater, if you are a uh, tremendous community servant or leader, or if you have athletic talent. Now, with the athletic talent, you need to contact the specific coaching staffs. Admission office is not the appropriate place if you want to be recruited athletically go directly to the athletic department. There's also NCA rules that we just want to be very, very careful with so that when you are being recruited, you're being recruited within the, the agreements that the colleges have with the NCAA. Uh, the attributes that we're looking for, obviously the appreciation for the mission of Notre Dame. And I will say that 15% of our students at Notre Dame are siblings of either current students or graduates. And in part, that's a pretty high percentage. I think the families who experience Notre Dame get Notre Dame. They see the value system at Notre Dame. And the siblings tend to be living the same value system as other students at Notre Dame. And, and if they're able to, to articulate that, I think that's appreciated. We do not give siblings 
or grandchildren's or nieces or nephews uh, special additional consideration. You have to earn your spot in the class in fair competition with other people. But part of earning that spot is articulating whether you understand what Nerd Aims trying to accomplish and you relating to how you've already dedicated yourself to similar activities. So I do think that there is some success in those groups, but it's not because of us partitioning a share of the class and providing it to that student unless they've won it in competition with the rest of the pool. Now with alumni children, uh, we have 23% of our freshman class are alumni. If you look at the last 25 years, it's ranged from 21% to about 25%. It's normally 22, 23, 24%. This year it's 23%. So over 450 of our 2,000 freshmen are children of alumni. About half of those children, a little bit more than half, if we did not have that special extra consideration for alumni children, they would not have gotten in. They, somebody else with a record that overall, both academically and socially, personal assessment, we felt was somewhat stronger, would have taken that spot. So there are about a thousand alumni children walking on this campus today that are freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors who have benefited from the university's commitment to the alumni. Uh, I think that's quite loyal. The national uh, average, if you take the top 15 uh, most selected private universities and we're easily in that group, uh, they average around 11 to 12 percent alumni children and we average around 22 to 25 percent. So we're essentially double everybody else. I'm often asked why is that true? Is Do the other schools not give special consideration? No, they do too. Um, and I don't mean to be uh, cute, but the average Notre Dame family tends to have more children. We, we just, uh, alumni at Notre Dame, our demographic is not normal with the American uh, family demographic of 1.8 children. Also, I think Notre Dame alumni are more loyal. They don't see another school as, as matching up with Notre Dame. Notre Dame's unique. And so when you buy into the mission and you buy into the specific attributes of Notre Dame, uh, it's hard to replace Notre Dame in the minds of most alumni. Also, I think there are students that come here, here the children, have a good experience and they want their siblings to come here. So there is a strong alumni pool. 43% of the alumni uh, kids last year were admitted and 19% of non-alumni children were admitted. Now I also have to say though that we could be very proud as alumni that the academic profile of the admitted and enrolled alumni students is really uh, very strong and not much different than the overall class profile. But in part, it's because a disproportionate number of our very top students at Notre Dame are children of alumni who could have gone to the other top 10 schools but chose Notre Dame. And then the other half benefited from the somewhat uh, enhanced uh, opportunity to come to Notre Dame from our commitment to alumni children. So the two groups balance and really show a, overall a great profile. So we're very proud of our alumni children. Uh, now, for those of you who are watching who are not uh, alumni, uh, most of us were not the children of alumni. And over three quarters of the class are students who are not children of alumni. So please understand you have a fair shot. I, I like to say that in the end what the admission office does is we balance our sense of loyalty to the alumni with our sense of fairness and access to everybody else. Everybody deserves to start their family tradition at Notre Dame. And you know, if we had had a rule that excluded more students who would have gained the spot by competition and only enrolled alumni children, many of us would never have gotten in. So I, while we're double the national average, we think it's a proper approach and if you are not an alumni child, you still have a great shot at Notre Dame. In fact, the majority of students here are not children of alumni. Uh, in addition to that, I, I do want to note that if you have athletic skills and the coaches are recruiting you, rest assured the coaches let the admission office know how much they would like to see a student 
enroll. I've worked at the Ivy League. I've worked at Division Three schools. It's true for all schools at all levels, and Notre Dame pays attention to that as well. We just make sure that our kids can do the work and be successful here. And if you haven't seen this, Notre Dame ranks first in the nation among athletic departments in graduating their athletes in academic progress. So we're very proud overall of the long-term record. As you know, we have individual cases that pop up, and we've had one in the news recently. Um, we take care of those. We, we do not hide these things underneath, and we uh, work on them. And we also study in admissions if, if we found athletes were, uh, who were not making the grade uh, were all concentrated in a certain type of profile, we would adjust our, our admission standards. We have not found that to be the case. It is fairly randomly distributed across the, 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 the campus. And that's true, by the way, for non-athletes that get caught up in academic issues. It really isn't related to having credentials that are lower than somebody else. It's more of a character issue. It's more of making personal decisions. And we have to remember as parents, 18 to 22 year olds make interesting decisions sometimes. We're here to help them learn from those and move forward. Um, I also wanted to note that if your student or if you're a student listening to this, any special commitment that you have had to create an organization, build up a program, we're interested in looking at that. So make sure that you if you are particularly proud of, of starting something, you're innovative, you're entrepreneurial, uh, we're very interested in that. Now, I'll give you very quickly a numbers profile of the class. So we had 17,901 applicants. We admitted a fifth of those students, 21%. We enrolled 2,011 freshmen. 53% of our admits enrolled. That places us among the top 10 in the nation for enrollment rate, uh, percentage of admits who enroll being uh, that enrollment rate. We also brought in 118 new transfers, many of which did not gain admission the year before, but contacted us and gridded it out, and they successfully came in. They'll be graduating in three years with the same class that they applied to last year. So we're very proud of our transfers as well. The academic profile of the Notre Dame first year class places us probably among the top 10 or at least among the top 15 in the nation. Uh, these statistics uh, are meant to be somewhat descriptive, but don't view that these are cutoffs or this is the number you need that if you have it, you'll get in. If you don't have it, you won't. And I'll explain that in a minute. But 54% ranked in the top 2% of their high school if rank was provided. Uh, the middle 50% scored an SAT between 1380 to 1510 on critical reading math, or a 32 to 34 on ACT. Median SAT was 1460, ACT 33. Uh, median mean right in the middle of the class. Uh, this might be a little difficult to read, but to give you an idea, uh, we are the most national school, I think, in the United States, and our average student last week traveled 900 miles to start their career at Notre Dame. Collectively, that was 1.8 million miles for the freshman class. Uh, the moon's about a quarter of a million miles, so that's more than three round trips to the moon just for the freshman to get here. About 24% per, are from the East Coast, 11% are from the Southeast, so from kind of the eastern side of the country, about 35%. Midwest is around 38%. And then the West is around 20%. And outside the US, around 7%. Uh, it is fun for our kids to meet people from everywhere. And those of us who are alums have all sorts of stories of coming from one place and coming together here and meeting people from everywhere else. It's part of the education at Notre Dame and part of the, the long-term experience that we have as alumni. Uh, Notre Dame broadens your world, and not only just within the United States, but now globally. We're very lucky. By the way, we do not look at uh, regional location to affect the admission decision. So these are accomplished without uh, the social engineering of regional diversity. Uh, 
To get to a, just a couple things, how did we get to this profile? Well, SATs, as I mentioned, were not the most important or ACT. 40% of the kids with the very highest test scores did not get in. And their spots were taken by students we thought that were better. But we thought they were better because of their class performance, their grit, their attitude towards learning, their attitude towards service to others, to people. They're, you know, they have a faith-based approach to their life that fits the Notre Dame mission as the leading uh, world's Catholic university. And so we, we go for fit and mission as, as we do the academics. Now, 39% of the students ranked in the top 1% of their high school gained admission, which means more than 60% uh, did not. So having one number is not a guarantee for an in or an out. And I just wanted to stress that because it is very stressful to apply to a place like Notre Dame and wonder how much do they use the numbers. And I guess I'm showing you all these numbers to prove to you that we don't use the numbers very much, kind of ironically. Uh, the profile of the class, the type of high schools our kids came from, 42% from Catholic high schools, 42% from public. We also had 16% from private or charter schools. Uh, 13,005 high schools were represented in the 2011 number of freshmen. 23% uh, as I noted before were alumni children, 15% are siblings. About another 200, about another 10% had aunts or uncles or grandparents. 9% uh, were first generation, the first in their family to go to college. 11% are Pell recipients, which means generally their household incomes are under 50,000 or, or less. 81% are Catholic. Uh, how does that stack up with other Catholic universities? If you take the top 25 Catholic universities in America and you look at their profile, they average around 50 to 65% Catholic. So Notre Dame is continuing to attract the top Catholics. Uh, we also look for, uh, if you're not Catholic, that's fine. We will look at, do you get the Notre Dame mission? Are you willing to engage Notre Dame in what its mission is? And you don't have to be Catholic to engage Notre Dame in its mission. You do need to convey that you get the difference of Notre Dame with the other top 10 universities. We do not want to be a generic top 10 university. We want to be number one at who we are. And we want kids who want a top 10 type educational experience, but they view us as number one, that we're unique and this is where you want to be. Uh, we are 25% US students of color and our international number of 109 freshmen was the largest we've ever had. So our diversity continues to rise. Uh, I've been asked whether Notre Dame should get larger since we have such a wealth of the applicant pool. You can see that we're already the fourth largest. If you take the top 20 national research universities that are the most selective, we're the fourth largest already. Uh, this was a chart from a couple years ago. You can see that two years ago we enrolled 2014 first year students. This year it's 2011. Cornell is larger with about 3,200 freshmen. Penn has about 24, 2,500 freshmen. Northwestern and Notre Dame are about the same size. If you take all of the top, top 20, the, the whole group averages around 1,500 to 1,600 freshmen. So we're about a third, about 30% larger than the average school we're competing with already. We had our growth spurt. Uh, many of us came to Notre Dame when our enrollment was uh, around 1,600 to 1,700, and Notre Dame grew over the decades to its size now. So I think that you can trust that we'll remain about the same size, but realize it's relatively large already. Right. Um, I'm gonna wrap up with a couple comments about financial aid, and then we'll go into the Q&A. 55% of our freshman class received Notre Dame scholarships that were need-based. Uh, the clubs offered, by the way, several million dollars to our new and returning students. We also give out athletic, and about 3% of our students receive a merit award. Of all the money that students found for scholarships, 90% of it was from Notre Dame. 
So while there are outside awards that students are aggressively seeking, the bulk of the support is still on the university itself. And that's not an unusual statistic for other universities as well. Our average scholarship for a needy student was 34,000. Uh, Forty-four percent of our students who had demonstrated need, in addition to the scholarship, decided to take out a loan. That average loan averaged around 4,600. It used to average more. We have been reducing the loan and improving the scholarship amount. And by the way, if you're from a household that you're not sure whether you'd qualify for aid, go onto our website and go to the price calculator on the uh, financial aid website put in your, your attributes that they ask you, and we'll give you an estimate of what you might get from Notre Dame. This fall, 35% of our families that got need-based scholarship at Notre Dame had household incomes of 150,000 or higher. So we take into account if you're paying for private schools for your other children, we take into account how many are in college, we take into account if there's been a reversal in the household income, uh, the best thing to do is work directly with the financial aid office. But just know that we rank among the top 10 colleges for the percentage of admits who enroll. So our financial aid tends to be pretty supportive to accomplish that. Uh, you can look at this later, but these are the costs related to this year, one year at Notre Dame. Uh, it's a high cost, and that's why over half the students receive financial scholarships to help. And by the way, our average, if you noted on the last page, was 34000 So for the average student on aid, we're providing more than half of the cost of education for them. Because of our successful alumni who are generous and want any student to be able to come to Notre Dame, we are need-blind in admissions and we meet full need. Um, this gives you just a quick view of if students were admitted but did not enroll who are competition, 10% picked other Catholic colleges. 33% were offered full rides and honors programs at their state schools, so they got to go there for free. And 57% picked other private universities or colleges, many of which were our peer group. Um, but that is an interesting slide that you usually don't see from colleges. And we did put in, in parentheses, some of the main reasons why people gave. And we look at this to become more competitive each year. We're doing a lot more analysis. Um, going to go to what, what our goal is. We're trying to identify, even though we have this wealth of applicants, we would like to keep shaping our applicant pool. We want to make sure that all the students around the globe who should have considered Notre Dame have. So which students will benefit most from the mission of Notre Dame? Have we gone out there and found them and have we had a meaningful conversation with them? So we've done more in the last five years to, to approach that question and answer it, and we're going to do even more in the next five. Our message that we give when we're recruiting is that being the Catholic University differentiates us among all the other top universities. It's development of the whole person, formation that leads to a greater sense of who you are and a commitment to serve others. That's Catholic social teaching. And we also think it makes you a better and happier person. We're trying to not just take your intellect, we're trying to create a wisdom and a calmness in you where that's the Notre Dame product, is somebody who is smart but wise. And the, the difference between wisdom and intelligence, I think, is a key difference maker for Notre Dame. Uh, we certainly want top undergraduate academic research-oriented students who have these personal attributes, but also have these academic desires and abilities. And then the last thing I would just note is you have to be willing to come together in a campus community. Notre Dame is probably not the best place for a lonely individual performer that doesn't really want to relate to other people. We're more focused on finding people, and I think the vast majority of people fit our profile and that they want to be with others. They, they want to participate and be part of a community and then be part of our alumni network. Um, so, you know, developing a greater sense of yourself, developing a sense of purpose here at Notre Dame, we will add to your intellectual development, but we'll also give you a calming sense of wisdom. 
I think these are some of the key benefits that we're trying to communicate to students when we're recruiting them. Uh, we also feel that we're affordable, we're accessible, and that Notre Dame, when you look at the campus, the quality of the faculty, the quality of the facilities, the alumni network, the way that employers recruit here, uh, we're one of the top values. We rank always in the top three or four in graduation rates. And also, I will note that we're one of the best schools for not defaulting. Our students do not default on their loan or their payments to the university. And we're very proud of, of just how successful our families are. Uh, so with that, I'm going to just note that uh, this slide is for if you have specific questions after the talk where you want more detail on specific areas, these are the key people to, to contact and they will uh, respond or have a member of their staff respond to your questions. And I just wanted to uh, thank you for today and uh, I'll probably these last slides mention them as we're going through the Q&A. Thanks, Don. Uh, for those of you who are watching at home, remember you can submit your questions now using the Q&A panel in the bottom right-hand uh, portion of your screen, and we'll try to get to as many of the questions as we can during our Q&A session here. Uh, so, Don, uh, you know, looking at a lot of those statistics that you presented um, on the class of, of 2018, you know, with the, the, the test scores and the number of mm -hmm. students in the top 1% of their class, and um, the incredibly talented class we saw, it's, it strikes me that you and your staff might have the toughest job on campus. And I wonder, um, you know, was, was, the, was the 2018 applicant pool as competitive? As, there's a sense, I think, yeah. among many people that Notre Dame is getting more, harder and harder to get into. Was the 2018 uh, class applicant pool the most competitive you've seen? And is this yeah. the most selective class we've ever had here at Notre Dame? Yeah, it's a, it's a good thing to talk about. Um, and parents particularly and students, I think you've seen that the amount of material that you're getting in the mail, you are getting pounded by the colleges. And Notre Dame, we, you, you may not have been pounded as much by Notre Dame, and I, I will tell you, we try to be careful not to overdo admissions and recruit students that won't have a strong chance for admission. There are some schools out there that have decided to elevate their rankings by creating a large pool of applicants that have no chance of getting in. And we have chosen not to do that. So this year we had about a 1.5% lift in the number of applicants, but there was a 15% increase in the very top portion of the applicant pool, students that have traditionally gained admission. And we had over-enrolled the class last year as well. So we were trying to be a little smaller. It ended up being that about a fifth of the, the class that enrolled last year wouldn't have gotten into this freshman class. About a third of the class that just graduated would not have gained admission into this first year class. So the alumni who always say, gee, I want to get in today, at least you have company now. Even some of the current students want to get in today. But the, the question is, who wouldn't get in and who, who still gets in? And what I'll tell you is we're using a lot of the same standards, but it is just more competitive. But we're not just grabbing it. If anything, we're using the numbers less because the numbers are getting so high, they mean less when they're all so high. You don't distinguish on that. We're also looking at how to keep changing the application so we can get to know our applicants better. We may go to, within the next two years, a pilot program for alumni interviews. We are looking at that. Stay tuned. Uh, for parents and alumni, uh, we may in a couple cities this next year try it. And if it works, we may expand that. The question is, do interviews help an applicant convey who they really are? Or do interviews tend to intimidate a lot of kids? And, and you, you kind of create a system where the extroverts win, but the introverts lose. And, that would be regrettable. So we will look at how to change the process a little bit as we continue to get more selective. But I really think we're using the same um, value system, but there is more competition, and that's, that's just fair to state and, and to understand. And with uh, you know, increased competition, how does it, uh, be, does it become more difficult to balance um, some of the goals you have for maintaining you know, 
certain groups within the student body. They were, as you outlined, very, were very proud of percentage of uh, students who are children of alumni or percentage of students who are Catholic. Mm -hmm. Does that become more difficult as the uh, applicant pool grows and becomes more competitive to keep those percentages up? Well, I think the Catholic percentage won't go down. Uh, we are really challenged ourselves to be most proactive with going out and finding the very top Catholics around the world and talking to them about Notre Dame. And we had not done that as, as kind of a self-identified uh, goal. We really hadn't done that in the way that we're doing it now. So we should be picking up more and more just strong Catholic apps. So I don't think that will go down. And, and I want to note that if, if we see a non-Catholic who fits the faith based approach of Notre Dame and is highly attracted to it, we're attracted to them too. It's just that they have to get the unique nature of Notre Dame. You don't have to be Catholic to do that. But I, I do think that the university would be concerned if we fell below 80% Catholic, how would that change the university? And we'd have to look at that and only if we thought it changed it for the better, and I guess our assumption is that being more Catholic is a good thing so we're going to try to maintain that Catholic presence in the class. Alumni kids have kept up and the other groups, it's our job to go out and find the best of those interest groups and make sure they're coming to Notre Dame. We've been able to do that so far. So I think we're just very uh, confident that we can continue to improve our process here to go find the types of students we want to get the diversity we want and the talent we want, but yet keep making it a better version of Notre Dame every year. We're not going to change into something we're not. Sure. You mentioned earlier the uh, potential for a pilot program with alumni interviews and communities mm -hmm. around. Uh, on a somewhat related note, we have a question from Jordan who asks, um, how can he find out if representatives from uh, the enrollment division at Notre Dame are, are coming to his school or city uh, for informational or recruiting purposes. Right. right. If you want to know how Notre Dame is coming uh, out to your areas, go on to the admission website and you identify where you're coming from or where you want to know the activities are being held. And you can go online to the admission website and find who your admission officer is for your region, but also whether they or I sometimes, I do a fair amount of travel, Bob Mundy, the director of admission, does a fair amount of travel. Who is coming to your city? Where will they be? When will they be there? We also now list our high school visits so you can see if your high school is being visited. If your high school is not being visited, don't worry. Come to the evening reception. More students actually come to the evening receptions than the high school visits because actually during the day, missing class is tough. And some schools won't let you out of class, so oftentimes we're meeting with the high school counselor to talk to them about Notre Dame and make sure they're fully aware. As much as we can meet you at your high school, we're happy to do it, but do those evening sessions. And we also try to do a fair number of sessions after you're admitted, both on campus and in your hometown. So even after getting admitted, look for the admitted student events that our alumni are hosting in your area. Uh, we have another question about the admissions process uh, from a, a viewer who's asking about the early action program right. at Notre Dame and what restrictive early action means. Sure. So there are two types of basic programs that you'll find as a college applicant today. There's early decision, which we do not run. Early decision is a commitment that if you apply early to a college and you gain admission, you are required to enroll at that college and disengage on any other applications that you've started. Uh, there are a fair number of the top 15, 20 schools that have that system. So it is an early obligation. You're not given till May 1st, which is the normal date that all uh, high school seniors are supposed to make their commitment to their college. So early decision means you're locked in if you get into that school. You do here early but you have no other choice. You must go to that school. Notre Dame has, up to this point, evaluated that as not being in the best interest of our applicants. We feel that we want to give you the option that you have till May 1st to always make your admission decision on picking Notre Dame or your other choices. Uh, we think if you're smart enough to have been admitted, we were hopeful that you're smart enough to pick Notre Dame. But 
we want to give you that freedom till May 1st. The restricted early action program that we now have, which is different from previous years, we used to have no rules. You could apply early and go anywhere whenever you want. But we did decide that there ought to be a mutual relationship of some accountability. So we have what we call restricted early action. Means that you may apply early to Notre Dame by November 1st, and you'll hear by mid-December from us. And if we admit you, you still have until May 1st to make your decision. So you still have that freedom. But you cannot apply to our early action program if you've also chosen to apply to a different university that has an early decision program. The reason why we're making that distinction is why would Notre Dame benefit and why would you benefit if we admit you but then you can't possibly use that offer of admission because you're already committed to another school that admitted you. And we've had students in the schools complain uh, and alumni complain that they've seen students immediately uh, after being admitted to early decision toss away our early admit. It kind of devalues the value of early admission. And Stanford, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, Georgetown, Boston College, pretty good group of peers have the same approach that we have. So we, we all let you go to early action till May 1st to decide, but you cannot apply to an early decision program. Uh, now, if you apply early, there's three decisions you can get. Congratulations, you're admitted to Notre Dame. Two, it's too close to call. We're going to defer your application and we'll review you again uh, in uh, March and get you a decision by the end of March in regular action. By the way, last year about 900 students were deferred and over 100 of them were admitted in regular action. So they were too close to call in early, but we were able to verify when we put them in regular that, yes, these were the students that we thought are the spot. We do not try to make it easier or harder to get in if you apply early or regular. You're going to get the same admission decision uh, whether you apply early or regular. So don't feel pressure to apply to Notre Dame early just because you think I'll, I'll have a better chance of getting in. You have the same chance. question is, do you have a record that you're ready to be evaluated on by uh, early December of your senior year, or, or would you rather wait and give us your seventh semester grade, some more materials, and have us read your file in February and March? You mentioned during the presentation that we have 118 new transfer students mm -hmm. who enrolled at the university this fall, and we have a question about that. What advice um, would you give to someone, a student who maybe wasn't admitted to the class of 2018, mm -hmm. but would like to attempt to transfer after their freshman year somewhere else? What's the best advice you'd give to potential transfer students about how they should go about you know, their first year in college preparing to prepare right. as a transfer at Notre Dame? Right. If, if you have a strong desire to be at Notre Dame, and you, we were not smart enough to admit you the first time. And you go to another school, and you work very hard, and you do well academically, we will look at what courses you take and your academic per performance in that. We'll also look at all the other attributes. We'll go back and look at your freshman application as well to, to look at everything you accomplished in high school. I think a clear statement in addition to your academic record of why you still believe that Notre Dame's the right place and what you want to study at Notre Dame, you're going to be a little bit more focused as an incoming sophomore on fields of study than you are as an incoming first year student. Uh, that's important. So taking, um, accomplishing the best grades that you can the average student that gained admission was probably, to, to be strongly considered, you need to do at least A minus work at a college. We're at a 3.5 or higher. Now, if you do a 3.4 and you want to take a shot, take a shot. But also, we look at the context of what courses you took and what school you went to. Um, but do your very best of that year. Stay focused and don't lose heart. You may very well get to come to Notre Dame. The, the other thing that I would just note is make sure you know what courses the freshmen at Notre Dame are taking in your field of study. So if you need to take a calculus at your college, because that's what freshmen here are doing, or if you need to take a science course, most of our students at transfer have taken a semester of math each semester, so two semesters in college, 
of math, and two of science, and two in English. So those are six courses you should plan on taking no matter what you're going to major in. It's best to take three courses each semester, math, science, English, and then take electives as to what you decide you want. We've got time for about one more question. We have one here that deals with the uh, financial aid system and sort of the future of, of that system. And uh, he asks, will Notre Dame uh, ever become, is Notre Dame thinking of exploring becoming a no-loan university at some point in the future? You know, there are a few schools that are no-loan. We're becoming more no-loan for a higher percentage of our pool, but we have not accomplished yet with our, with our resources no-loan for everybody. Uh, it is a competitive disadvantage to be at, uh, to have loans in when you're competing with a fair number of schools that no longer have loans at all. But most of our competitors still have some loan in their packages. We're competitive with almost everybody, uh, but we're going to keep improving our financial aid. And so I think that reducing the loan is, is a key element in our future uh, fundraising and our admissions financial aid strategies. Well, Don, thank you so much for uh, taking the time out today. We know how busy you are preparing, uh, helping choose the, uh, the next generation of Notre Dame students, and we really appreciate you taking out the time and sharing your time with our alumni and friends here today. Great, and I would just encourage uh, our friends and alumni to go online, and if we're doing a reception in your area, our admission officers, uh, you think it's hard to get into Notre Dame. We have about 140 applications from Notre Dame graduates applying for every admission position opening. So while we admit about one out of five applicants that come to Notre Dame, one out of about 140 is selected to be that admission officer. Uh, they, they love their job. They do it as well as they can. It's difficult circumstances because we meet a lot of kids we love, and we don't get to admit all the students that really belong at Notre Dame that we'd love to have that would succeed. So sometimes it breaks our heart as well. And I would just say be kind to them. Give them the benefit of the doubt. Just know that we're all working hard for Notre Dame and we're trying to be fair to everybody. But sometimes being fair to everybody, if you don't get the decision you want, just trust that we did it with a complete honest open heart and we, we tried to do the right thing. But uh, when one out of five or less are getting in, um, it's tough. And we know it's tough on you, it's tough on us, but in the end, uh, just trust that if you meet the Notre Dame kids and you meet our admission officers on the road, I think you'll feel fair, fairly good about where Notre Dame is these days. Thanks, Don. Yeah. Thanks to all of you who joined us live. If you're interested in going back and, and rereading Don's presentation, you can watch the recording of this program. We'll post it on our YouTube page um, within the next day or two. It's If you search for the Notre Dame Alumni Association, uh, on YouTube, you should be able to find that and all of our previous online learning events. To stay up to date on our upcoming online learning events, please visit my.nd.edu slash online.